I got it. At least part way. We're having some trouble on the 944 again where the passenger door won't unlock. This is the third time this has happened. After the first time, it lasted for a few months. And then about a month ago, it happened to me. I took the whole lock assembly apart and I thought I fixed it. And I thought that the handle was just not retracting completely because that was the only mode I could find where if the handle was pulled in a little bit and stuck there, it would jam the lock and, and the lock would not move. But this does not seem to be stuck at all at this point. I've added power locks. The lock motor doesn't move the lock at all. And if we try the key, that doesn't move it either. So I think we're gonna have to take this apart and figure out what went wrong. The last time this happened, I rolled down the window look down into the channel here and if you see this little ball right here that's where the power lock for the factory locks would attach there's usually a little cylinder attached on top of that or if you have power locks a plastic arm would be attached to that i was able to stick something down and work on that a little and and push it to unlock the door and from that point it worked for a while I also took the mechanism apart, cleaned and greased it, and, and thought I had this solved, but since it's happening again, something's getting jammed in there. And so, while I could work that to unlock it to get into the door, there's another way to open the door, because I'd really like to take the lock mechanism out as it sits right now to see if I can figure out what is actually jammed. If we look at the driver's side door as an example, this is the latch mechanism in the open position. When you shut the door, the bolt comes in here and latches that way. What you need to do, if you can reach from the inside of the car, you want to push down on this lower tab. And if you can get that down, that'll unlatch the door. That'll allow us to get the door open. Hopefully we can get the lock mechanism out and see what's wrong with it. On the inside of the car, if we look at this seam in the door card, it's about two inches down where that latch is. If we can maybe get this out of the way. Can't really see in there. I think I need something that'll hook around the edge. Something that's got a little bend to it. I looked on the driver's side and with the right lighting I noticed there is a little bit of a gap where I can see in there, so I think I can get in there. There's the tiniest gap in there. I can just barely see it. I can't really get the camera in there for a good angle. Let's see if I can get in there with a pick. Maybe that'll grab it a little better. I'm cheating a little bit. Got a little camera fished up in there. I'm trying to get the pick right up into that spot. Seems like it's just out of reach of the edge of this pick. I think I gotta bend it a little more. I bent it over a little further. I really feel like I'm on it there. Just won't move. That's if I'm hitting the right spot, which I think I am. I don't see this happening too easily. I'm getting close. It was really awkward trying to move the pick around by watching the camera since my hand movements were not moving in the same direction as what I would see the pick do on the camera. I got it, at least part way. The door is now open. You have snap covers over screws at the top, one here, one over here. You've got six screws along the bottom one in the corner that has another plastic thing that comes out after you take this pocket out. You got two in the bottom of the handle here. You got one behind that handle. 
you got to take the speaker grill off. The speaker can stay in place, but you might want to put one or two of the screws back in after you take the cover off just to hold the speaker in place. And then you have two screws underneath the window switch. And then finally you have four plastic snaps. It helps to have a trim panel removal tool like this that's forked at the end, but it's not necessary. A flat blade can work. Uh, you have one, two, three, four. Let's get to it. One thing I found helpful, sometimes these plastic tabs will break off of this lower door pocket. Cut them off flat and drive a small screw in there, about a number six, and that'll fit in the upper hole and just helps keep the top in place. The switch comes out and down. You can either unplug the switch or when you go to lift the door card up, you can just pass this, this whole switch and plate through that opening. With the card upside down, you can see there's this metal tab in there that fits in this slot here, so you have to lift the card up as you move it out. I had resealed my door with new plastic and new butyl tape, and it looks like that butyl tape went a little beyond the plastic as it got squished in there and stuck to some of the uh, inside of the door card. Oh well. So now we have to peel this plastic back. Wow, that's really sticky. There's one of those fasteners that stayed stuck in the door. Tool pops them right out. So here's where I attached my power locks. The motor is down below. I'm going to disconnect that lock rod, take out this plate in here where there's three eight millimeter bolts. Five sixteenths will also fit that. And then a five millimeter Allen to remove the latch mechanism. After doing this a couple of times, you'll get really good at retrieving hardware from the inside of the door. A little magnet will work wonders to do that. Helps to have good eyesight so you can read the actual numbers on the wrench. Nine millimeter won't fit if it's really an eight millimeter. Trying to be really careful in getting this lock mechanism out just in the position that it's in because I really want to see what's jamming it and I'm hoping not to move anything. Everybody says you have to remove the window to get into there, but I've had them out before. It's a little tricky. I did remove the handle from the outside of the door and then disconnected those linkages. I'm wondering if I can reach those from here to disconnect them without moving anything. You can see right there, that's the arm from the key lock on the outside. So I used a screwdriver to just push that off. That's the arm from the handle that goes right down behind there and attaches right there. So I may be able to push that off with a screwdriver. There, I got that off. Now we should be able to get the mechanism out of here. My lock motor is in the way. The lock motor is down here. Maybe we just zip that off. That's easy enough. The cable for the door handle is kind of stiff. Give us a little more freedom of movement here. This vent here sticks in a little bit. Pop that out of the way. It also gives you a better opening for fishing screws out of the bottom of the door. 
I'm sure this would still be easier if I took the window track out, but that just seems like something I don't want to do. All right, the window's up. Let's fiddle around with this a little more. And we are out. There it is. Let's go put it on the bench, see what we can figure out. Oh, as usual, the bench is a mess. We gotta clean that up. That's how we make room. The first problem is this lock won't go up and down. It's going down to this part, and that looks like that can move. That's free. Interesting, it seems like when I pull up on that, that's where it's jammed. If I give it a little more push, it will move. I wonder if something's bent in there that's jamming a little. So this lever right here, that's what the handle connects to. So when the door is unlocked, you can see this space up here allows this lever Actually, that's when the door is locked, right? Uh, that's unlocked, where this pin pushes on the lower lever and moves it. When the door is locked, there's a space there, so it can't push that pin. And what I thought was happening was if the handle on the outside was bound up a little, which I thought it was, because it was sticking a little. If the handle's not fully retracted, it stops it. If it's in this little slot here, you can't unlock the door at that point. And I thought that's what was going on. When I last worked on this, I cleaned it out really well and applied some silicone grease in there. How many bags can we use to seal a package? And there's one more. Yep, I bought another one. Found an inexpensive one on eBay. I figured we'll take a look at this and see how it works. See if it gives us any insight. See if it drags less. Maybe figure something out here. It was cheap, worth a shot. That was what came in my car. This is the one that I ordered, the new to me used one. It seems pretty good, definitely has this stiff grease in here. So when I move the mechanism, it seems a little sluggish. So I think I gotta give it a good shot of some brake clean and get all that old grease out of there, lube it up, see if it works any better. And then I can get a better assessment of how it feels in relation to the old one. You can see even on the latch mechanism, this is the one that came in the car. I had cleaned it. It's got a good snap to it. This one definitely stiffer in there. So if I'm going to use this one, it needs a good cleaning. Try a little silicone spray to start with. This mechanism, I sprayed it with brake clean, some penetrating oil, brake clean again to get that oil out, and then silicone spray. And I'll get some silicone grease in there to stay in there, but it feels a lot smoother now too so I think this one's gonna be good I'm hoping uh, we're not gonna run into the problem again I was wondering if the door handle linkage might have been too tight and maybe it was pulling on it because I I found that mode where if the door handle was down pin right here would get blocked and it can't unlock but I don't think that was the case because I'm pretty sure when I took the mechanism out, it was still kind of jammed. So I don't think it was the linkage being too tight. So yeah, that's the bottom bolt of the window track. Is it enough to get in there? Not really. 
So you can see the two attachments to the door handle. You got the key cylinder is the white rod and then the door handle lever, black plastic tab at the end. I was able to get a screwdriver in there to pop those off, but I don't know that I can get pliers in there to squeeze them back on. That's going to be tough without moving that track. So I think I'm going to go back to what I did the last time where I take the door handle off. Those come off with the door handle. I can attach them to the lock and then reattach the door handle from the outside. So for the door handle, we just go and take this off and move the handle forward and that comes out and there's our two levers this one pops right off the ball on here the lever for the handle you just have to take that pin out of there which when you're putting it in the pin is on the bottom so it's a little awkward to get to but with a pair of pliers you can get in there okay this is how they're arranged in the door you can see that goes there, this goes here. And you can see the, the door handle has some adjustment to it. This thing can screw in and out. Everything I've seen shows those as kind of a friction fit in there, but I did have one of my two handles had a clip on the end of it. And it was on the driver's side, which was a replacement handle. My passenger side, I've got the scripted handle here, but the driver side does not, so that tells me it was replaced at one point. All right, now that should be able to go back in the door. Anyone who's done this and taken the window out, I'm sure is chuckling at me, watching me struggle with this. There it goes. Here you just want to make sure you get the two threaded pieces coming through and then you can get that latch in place there. So we've got the key lock rod right there, that white thing, and the door handle connection is right behind that. So when you have it in the right spot, that's how it should look. That pivot point, the hole where the pin goes should be on the bottom and the lever from the handle pushes in on the top. And then you can see right behind that, that white lever is for the key lock cylinder. Now we can struggle with the little white one for the lock. You don't get much of an angle in there to see it. There it is, just about. Okay, now we're on. Can't forget the handle gasket that fell off. Loosen up the handle, you don't have to disconnect anything. You can slip them right over. I did something wrong because my handle does not move. Yeah, I caved and took the window out. A lot easier to see in there. Now I gotta pop that rod off and see why it's binding up. So I figured out where I messed up. Where the handle pulls out, that has to go into that little spot there. And that brings this arm up higher. I didn't do that. I had just latched it, put the pin through the bottom, and the arm was sitting here, so this pivot point was down lower. And that's why it wasn't going, it was all the way pushed down. You can see, if that lower pin is in there, the whole thing's going to pivot in further. A lot easier to get in that way. Now let's get it back in the door. Well, this gives me a much better opportunity to adjust the length here. And as you can see, it looks like I'm way long, so I do have to screw the plastic part up a lot further to get it in line with this. So, kind of glad I took the window out to do that. I almost wonder now if that's why the lock was binding. Maybe I had this down too far, and it was just holding this lever down a little bit, and we saw... If that binds, 
you can't unlock if that's just down a little bit, but if it's up all the way, so that very well could have been it. And that might have been my fault taking the handle off another time. I might have let this turn a little and go downward. So that's how the handle mechanism works. Then we need the lock on there. A little smaller, this one's easier to snap on. Got that. And that works with the key. All right, I like that. So I should probably tighten everything up and try the door, make sure that handle works well. Wow. That takes a lot of force. So that's our next problem here. This door, before I fixed it, this was requiring extra force to get the door open. The handle seems like it's taking even more pressure. It's really hard to squeeze. After getting this car, I did put new seals on here. I first bought some aftermarket seals. They were very tight and I returned those and went with the OEM Porsche seals. They definitely worked better, but in the case of this door, it's still very tight. One thing you can do is adjust the strike. You can loosen the three bolts here with a five millimeter Allen and move that in or out, up or down. You want to keep it in the middle of the latch on the door. And I moved it all the way out. I did that on the driver's side and that definitely made the door easier to open. The, the body lines don't exactly line up, but I'm less concerned about that than making it really hard to open, which would just lead to breaking the handle at some point. This one, I have it adjusted all the way out and it's still very tight. And the door is out a little bit from the uh, body, but I would sacrifice going out more if I could. We're going to see if we can fix this another way. Maybe it will involve trimming the gasket down a little bit. So taking the gasket right out of here, you can open and close the door quite easily. So it's clear that the pressure of that gasket getting squished in the space there is what's making this door difficult to open. I put some pieces of paper inside the door to try to get an assessment of how tight the gasket is in these different locations. The top seemed a little tighter than the middle of the door and the bottom of the door. And then when I was looking closely at it, it seemed like the top of the door was closing in a little tighter when the door was out more from the body. So what I ended up doing was going over to the hinges using a 13 millimeter socket loosening up these two top screws and the two bottom screws letting the door top move outward and the door bottom move inward and now it's still a little tight but it's a lot better than it was before so i think that helped get the adjustment a little better so the top of the door was not pushing in as tightly as before so the next thing I want to do is see if I can get the strike pin to move outward a little so that there's still a little bit less pressure on the door gasket. And I don't feel like I'm getting the full range of movement. You can see the nut plate that sits behind here. It's captured on the inside as I showed. Uh, and those, the little tabs that hold it are welded in place. I, I want to get it just a little bit more outward, and so I'm going to try giving it a little persuasion with a hammer. So I've added some blue tape as a guide to see if I can move it towards that. We'll use that and a piece of wood and see what happens here. So that definitely moved it out maybe almost an eighth of an inch. I'm going to try tightening that up and see if the door works better now. As soon as I tightened those, it pushed back a little. Let's see if we uh, give it a little more. Oh, 
Oh yeah, noticeably easier now. And again, you can see the door is out a little from the body, but that's a small price to pay for keeping a handle from breaking. Problem solved. Well, now we gotta figure out how to get the window back in there. So first we gotta get the window track back in. Got a screw down on the bottom there. And then another one, you can see it right in that gap there. And those are both eight millimeter. You can also see that the, the window track, uh, the part that actually touches the window peels right out of the metal part. So you can have easy access to that screw there. Now's the fun part, getting the glass in. So as you're working on it, an easy way to hold the window up is to just put a clamp up along the front. You want to make sure you get it into the track in the front and back. And then with that clamp there, it holds the front up. The front wants to fall down out of that track. So that'll hold it in place and it'll just lean against the, the back part of the track. You have two tracks on the base of the window. There's one here and there's one just above the motor area, the motor mounting point. And then you've got one arm, that's this lower arm here, and then another arm down here. And so you have to raise up the whole motor unit and get those two arms to have those wheels fit into these tracks. Once you lift it up, then you got to get your mounting bolt for the motor in place, or at least one of them to hold it. Of course, that side's the easy one. It's the blind one behind here that's gonna be tough. Yeah, I can see it right through that gap. That was actually pretty simple. We got both of those sliders in there. There's the arm with the wheel into the door slider. Now, I think we can lift up the motor mechanism and try to find our mounting holes. If I take the clamp off the window, I should be able to move it around a little. Oh, well, there's my lower in there. So once I got that lower bolt in, then I dropped the whole window and the mechanism down and I can see all of my other bolt holes lining up now. I gotta say, now I still have to check the adjustment of the window, but I really monkeyed around trying to get behind that window channel to get to the lock because I thought the taking out the window and motor was going to be a lot of work and a lot of fiddling and it's really not. Had I known it was that simple I would have taken it out long ago. I would say if, if you're the least bit hesitant just do it. It's really easy to take the window out. You got five bolts right there. The whole mechanism will drop down and you can lift the glass right out and then there's two small screws on that rear window channel and you've got full access. Much easier. I definitely wasted a lot of time trying to work around that. I think that's good. Well, that's not so good. I was just rolling the window down again and it fell off the track. So the adjustment was not correct. So I don't know exactly how the window came off track, but I noticed when I was rolling it down initially, the front part of the window came down first before the back. So it was definitely a bit crooked going down in the track. So I got it back in the track, readjusted the position, went to the five bolts that hold the window motor in there and got it readjusted so that the window would drop down straight as soon as you start from the beginning. And I ran it up and down a few times and now it seems to work fine. So I think we're all set there. So I thought about getting the proper connecting rod for the power lock to put the module up here where the factory unit goes. There's a plate that mounts to these holes and it sits right below there. But in the interest of time and getting it done, I'm just gonna go back to the way I had it before. It seemed to work fine. 
I had drilled a couple holes in here. Comes with this little block to mount onto another lock rod. So that's how I get my adjustment to move that whole lock assembly up and down. So adding the lock motor makes that button a little stiff to go up and down. But by power, it works just fine. So I think we'll leave it like that. Now I just have to get the rest of this butyl put back on here and get the plastic in place. I'm gonna make sure on the butyl at the bottom of the door, I'm gonna sit it a little bit inboard here so it doesn't squish out the bottom and stick to the door card. I bought the butyl in this roll. It's kind of a thick bead that I stretched it out to get it quite a bit thinner to fit in here. It's It squishes down quite a bit in the door. These little plastic snaps sometimes pull out of here. Get the glue to go in between fibers. It kind of helps hold it back together. Get that roughly in shape and this twists in there. You want to have this metal tab get into that slot. Helps to have the window down so the top can hook over into there and then we want to feed our window switch plate through that opening. Make sure the door lock button gets on there. If you can pull it out, then I know that tab didn't get in there. So. And that's it. I think for now, I'm just gonna put a couple screws into the handle, leave the rest off. Cause I wanna run through a few cycles and make sure everything's set okay and working without breaking again. But I think that wraps this up. I think we're in good shape. The uh, lock seems to be working and hopefully it doesn't jam up on me anymore.